Hey there folks, Paul Markle here, and I wanted to take a quick moment to share with you guys the story of my personal journey, my journey towards strength training. I suppose my story is pretty typical uh, as far as American men goes. When I was in high school, I played some sports, I played a little bit of football, uh, dabbled you know, with the, the wrestling, which I wasn't very good at because I was too lanky, too skinny. I uh, wasn't really coordinated enough to, uh, to play basketball very well. But uh, when I was a senior, I took a class, a, a PE class, and we had a brand new gym. They, the boosters got a bunch of money, and they set up a, a fitness center for the football players and wrestlers, basically. And they had a bunch of racks, and they had a bunch of machines, and a bunch of weights, and so forth. And they set up this special class that you could take. And when I was a senior, I took it. But I was six foot one, 155 pounds. I burned calories like a furnace. Couldn't really, I never really was able to put any real weight on. And I remember in the, the weight room, in the workout room, that there were posters or with diagrams for the, the lifts, whether it was the squat or the military press or the bench press or whatever. The instructor told us to do certain things. You know, do leg presses and leg curls and this and that. He would tell us to do these things, and so we would. We would just go through them. But I never really got strong. Uh, I never really noticed that big of a gain. Uh, I basically just did the same weights over and over again until I burned out. But I didn't understand. And then as time went by, I joined the Marine Corps, and I got really physically strong as far as conditioning. When you're in the Marine Corps, you do lots of things like push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups and so forth. And I got in really good physical conditioning, which you would expect from somebody in their early 20s. No big deal, right? Well, then I got out of the Marine Corps, active duty, and I started doing other jobs. And I, and I got on this roller coaster of fitness and softness and fitness and softness. I, I would get fit, you know, I'd get motivated, I'd go to the gym and I'd lose some weight and I'd get toned and I'd work out on all the freaking machines and so forth. You guys, many of you probably done it. You've gone to the gyms and you signed up and they have 12 or 20 different kinds of machines, right? So you, what do you do? Well, you go over and you watch people use the machines and you think, well, I'm a smart guy. I'm not an idiot. I know how to use this machine. So you get in the machine and you do whatever and you set your own thing. And then after a while you get bored with it and you fall into a soft period and then eventually you know, you're know you getting winded tying your shoes or whatever uh, and you say, oh, enough of this crap, I need to get strong again. And then you, you ride this roller coaster of fitness to softness and fitness to softness. And that's what I did for, for many years. Now, when I was a police officer, I uh, injured my, my left shoulder Something deep inside pulled, stretched, tore, uh, fighting with idiots, arresting idiots. It would start to get better, and then I would do something. I would do push-ups or whatever, and I would re-injure it. And I was like, ah, oh, well, there you go. And it would get better, and then it would get worse. Then it would get better, and then it would get worse. And uh, having been in the Marine Corps, carrying a lot of stuff, wearing the body armor and all the gear, carrying the big heavy packs, about the time I was 40, 41 years old, I started experiencing chronic lower back pain. It would come and it would go. You know, I, I'd get this lower back pain and I'd spend two or three days sitting on a heating pad, hope waiting for it to go away, you know, taking mouthfuls of Tylenol or, or Advil or whatever, and eventually it would go away and it'd be gone for several months, six months, or maybe a year. Then it would come back again. And it would go away, then it would come back again. Chronic, right? So about, uh, well, in 2017, uh, early 2017, my good friend James Yeager said, hey, I'm hosting this guy named Matt Reynolds. He's a strength training instructor, and he's a really good one, and you need to come up to the school, and you need to take this Fight Strong class. It's a two-day class. You and Jared need to come. Talk to Jared, my oldest son, and he said, I think we should go, Dad. And I said, yeah, I think you're right. We should go. Uh, but I went up there thinking, I'm 49 years old, uh, I've been in and out of gyms my whole life, I've watched people lift stuff, and I went to the class thinking, there's not much more that I can learn, right? 
I thought, okay, I'll go to the class and I'll listen to this guy. But I, I think I'm old enough and experienced enough that, that it's, it's not that I don't have the knowledge, it's just I haven't done it enough, right? And one other thing that I'll, I'll caveat with is uh, that somehow during my journey from being a teenager into the Marine Corps and so forth, I became convinced that my body type was not the body type to lift weights or to gain strength or to get strong from barbell training, right? I saw other people doing barbell training, but somehow I've been convinced, and I don't even know how or when it happened, but I've been convinced that my, you know, six foot one, long legs, long arms, body type was not the body type to engage in strength training or barbell training or whatever. So that was in my mind when I went to this camp in January of 2017. Well, I spent two, two full days uh, listening to Matt Reynolds explain not just how to do the four basic lifts, squat, deadlift, overhead press or military press, and bench press. I listened to him and I watched him explain not only how to do those, but why. The physiological science, the physical science behind barbell training and why we do what we do and why it works and what linear progression is and so on and so forth. And, and I soaked it all in. Uh, I soaked it all in for a couple of days and uh, I left there very motivated. I felt like, okay, now I understand why this is important. You know, I knew what a squat was. I knew what a deadlift was. I knew what a bench press was because every man has to bench because it's an ego exercise, right? I mean, how much can you bench, man? I never deadlifted in my life because that, to me, I saw other people do it and I thought, well, yeah, those big, really super strong guys do that, but my body type is I'm not a deadlift guy. I, I'm not going to do that. So went back home and uh, Jared and I both dedicated ourselves to the program. We're like, okay. We're gonna follow the program. We're gonna do what Matt said. We're gonna do the four basic lifts. We're gonna split them up. We're gonna do them three days a week. I started doing that. Then we had a big move and I had to take about a month off, but I got back into it. As you guys can see, I'm in my, my home gym here. Got myself some, the basic stuff, the basic rack, the basic bench, started acquiring weights and, and so on and so forth. And I started getting strong and I started working with a uh, Barbell Logic coach. Now, when we moved to Wyoming, I started recording, you know, video recording my, my workouts, sending them to my coach and having the coach make little critiques. You know, when I watch the videos that I recorded, you know, three or four years ago, I look at them and I kind of cringe. I was like, wow, I did not know what I was doing, but that's okay because you got to start somewhere, right? If you were perfect, you wouldn't need a coach. So, I started getting really strong thanks to my coach making little critiques. And a good coach won't give you six or seven critiques at a time. He'll give you one or two. Fix this thing and do it better next time. Fix this thing, do it better next time. And you build, that's what linear progression is. You just build a little bit at a time and you track it until, well, you see real serious results. When we got on the deadlift platform, I had my excuses preloaded. I told Matt, I said, well, you know, when I was a cop many years ago, I injured this shoulder and I said, it gets better. And then it, it I injured it again and I re-injured it, you know, it gets better and I re-injured it. And I told him, I said, and, you know, since I've been about 40, I've had chronic lower back pain. And he's like, I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to do this. He said, you don't want to make that back pain go away? And I said, yeah. He said, we're going to make your back strong. He said, we're going to make your back strong and that back pain is going to go away. I said, all right, I'll go. So I dedicated myself to the program. And by the time I was age 52, I was pretty darn strong for my age and, and well, for my life. I tracked it. When I was age 52, uh, I did a, a 375 squat for a single. Uh, I did a 425 deadlift for a single. Now for a 22 or 23 year old, you're like, yeah, whatever. That's not that, that impressive. But for me, that was, that was pretty impressive for me. When I started out, Matt said, hey, set goals. I want you to set a, I want you to set a one rep goal for press, bench, you know, squat, and deadlift. Set your goals, right? And uh, he explained that any man, physically capable, physically fit man, 
under age 40 should be able to reach a two, a three, a four, and a five. That's a 200 pound press for a single, a 300 pound bench for a single, 400 pound squat, 500 pound deadlift. Any man who is physically healthy should be able to achieve that if they're under 40. Well, by the time I started this journey, I was 10 years north of 40. So I said, I thought what was more practical goal, I set myself for, I dropped 50 pounds off each. I said, I'm gonna do a 150 press, a 250 bench, a 350 squat, and a 450 deadlift. And by the time I was 52, you know, a couple years into it, I had done the 150 press and actually it surpassed it. I did a one, up to a 155. I didn't do a max bench press. I was benching, my heavy benches were in the 220s or so, 230s. My squat, three, I had a goal of 350, I broke that. And then I broke it with a 360, then I broke it with a 370, and then I broke it with a 375, so I was pretty proud of myself. I wasn't able to reach the 450, but I got to 425, right before my 52nd birthday. I was diagnosed with cancer, and I realized that I was going to have to go through intensive cancer treatment. One of the things you guys may or may not know is when you go through either chemotherapy or you go through radiation therapy, uh, you lose a lot of weight. So when I started talking to these doctors, what they said is they're like, hey, we need to do everything we can to maintain muscle mass on you. I'm like, okay, I'm with you. Because at that point in my life, I was physically stronger. I was able to move more weight than I ever had been in my entire life, even when I was in the Marine Corps. And I was doing all kinds of push-ups and all kinds of sit-ups and all kinds of running and so forth. So when I started that cancer treatment journey, I was physically strong. Uh, and that was a good thing. That was an excellent thing. The doctors though, they're like, well, they said, we want you to maintain your muscle mass. And I said, okay, I'm with you. But none of them ever said how. I had dietitians tell me like, well, we need you to keep weight on. So we want you to eat, uh, you know, a, a lot more potatoes and peanut butter. Uh, and, and, and one of them even said tofu. Oh yeah, you know, to keep your weight on. As a, you know, I'm not a scientist or anything, but bulking up on carbs, on potatoes and peanut butter and, and tofu, not one physical therapist or dietitian or doctor, I mean, I talked to numerous ones, none of them ever said, hey, you might want to think about picking up heavy stuff and eating lots of protein because that will make you strong. That will keep the muscle mass on your body. No one ever said that. So I continued to work out. I continued to train in the gym to do the four basic lifts. I worked with my Barbell Logic coach and we kept going. I even hit 165 pound press PR three weeks into my radiation treatment. Now I ended up in the hospital because I got so sick from the treatment that I couldn't eat, I couldn't swallow. The pain was essentially unbearable. I ended up losing during the cancer battle about 50 pounds over the period of two to three months. I don't recommend dropping 50 pounds in three months. That's a massive weight loss uh, and it's hard on your body. And the reason I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys today is because it's been about a year and a half since I lost all that weight, since I had the feeding tubes and all that nonsense. I've been back in the gym. I've been working with my Barbell Logic coaches now, my, my first press workouts were 75 pounds, three by five, right? I would do three sets of five for 75 pounds. Then I put, you know, five pounds on and I kept going until that was too heavy, then two and a half pounds and so forth. And I eventually, you know, a couple of years ago, I hit my 150 pound one rep goal. Well, today, before I sat down here to record this video, I got in that rack and my workout not a one rep PR, but my workout was 150 pounds, three by four. So whereas two years ago, I was happy to be able to do 150 pounds just one time, put it up one time. Today, I put up 150 12 times for a workout. I guess my only regret in this whole entire journey is I wish I would have known how much potential was actually inside of me 10, 20 years ago, 30 years ago even. I didn't realize that. But you know who did? Matt Reynolds and his coaches realized that I had the potential in me. 
and they worked with me and I worked with them. And right now I have exceeded the expectations. I exceeded any expectations that I had a few years ago. Long story short, or long story a little bit longer, the reason I felt the need to sit down and record this video and tell you guys all about it is because I want you to realize that you probably have a lot more potential inside of you than you understand or that you can even realize. And I'm exceedingly grateful to have had good friends like Matt Reynolds and my personal coach Graham Scott Schaller uh, and James Yeager who inspired me to get going and to get started. And Scott too, don't forget about Scott, who actually worked with me and said, hey, you can do it and quit making excuses. Uh, and this is what we're gonna do, and this is how we're gonna get it done. And so, if I, I'm not a Superman, I'm nobody special, I don't have anything unusual about me, I'm probably very average. But if I can do it, you can too. My advice to you would be to go and check out the guys at Barbell Logic, read the, the frequently asked questions. If you're not sure about committing, that's fine. Ask some questions, they'll answer them for you. And I guarantee that if you commit to the program, you will see more results than you ever imagined you possibly could have. All right, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I'm Paul Markle. I'll talk to you again real soon.